Hello, and welcome to Flying Failures, where we'll be looking at the Blackburn Twin Blackburn. The Blackburn Twin Blackburn has gone down as one of the most notoriously flawed World War I fighters, this machine being the unhappy union of two BE-2C biplanes into a single aircraft that was practically unflyable, and illustrated a plethora of problems that made it more dangerous to its crew than the enemies it was intending to fight. In the months prior to the start of World War I, the Blackburn Company received an order from the Admiralty during May 1914 for a clutch of the Farnborough-designed BE-2C biplane trainers, which, together with larger and later batches, were built in a new and bigger premises at the Olympia Works alongside the Sopworth Cuckoo torpedo bomber. The first of these units, which pioneered the now legendary BA monogram of the new company, as well as being its first true military aircraft, was built in 1915 to an Admiralty specification that called for a long-range Zeppelin interceptor capable of operating over the sea at night, while a payload of Rankin incendiary steel darts, carried in 24 canisters, was intended to penetrate the airship's envelope and ignite the gas inside. The resultant machine, dubbed the TB or Twin Blackburn, comprised a large and unusual biplane design that married two wire-braced fabric-covered box girder fuselages, each with its own rotary engine, to a common 10-foot centre section forward and a conventional tailplane at the rear, these fuselages being supported on the water by separate and unconnected bungee-sprung stepped pontoons and small tail floats were attached at the rear by short steel struts. The fabric-covered wooden main planes, built up from I-section spruce spars and ribs of three-ply spruce, braced internally with drift struts and tie rods, were rigged in three bays, while the considerable overhang at each end of the upper main plane was wire-braced to triangular steel pylons above the outboard interplane struts, the fins and rudders being derived from BE-2C components taken from the Blackburn Company's own production and slightly modified in shape. The long-range capability was to have been achieved by fitting the twin Blackburn with a new type of 150 horsepower engine that was said to have an exceptionally low fuel consumption and a dry weight of only 380 pounds, this coming to pass as the 10-cylinder Smith Radial designed by John W. Smith, an American who brought his designs to England in January 1915 and was able to gain the interest of the Admiralty. Smith, therefore, was able to construct a prototype engine that was successfully bench-tested, while a production contract was awarded to Heenan and Froude Limited of Worcester, though only a few examples would eventually be delivered. The Smith engine, when flown experimentally during late 1915, showing disappointing performance when equipped to the AD Navy plane and Vickers FB-5 pusher biplane. Therefore, none of the nine twin Blackburns ordered by the Admiralty would be fitted with Smith's 10-cylinder power unit, while eight examples employed a 100-horsepower non-monosupup rotary engine, and the ninth was fitted with a 110-horsepower Clergett's power plant, the first non-powered machine, with works number 1509, being rolled out of the Olympia Works in August 1915. This unit, together with 1517, as the final and sole Clergett's fitted example, were type-trialed at RNAS Isle of Grain during 1916 flight testing for the twin Blackburn, illustrating to pilots the unusual control system of one fuselage cockpit being fitted with full instruments, including all flight and engine controls, while the second fuselage cockpit had only the starting handle for the engine on that side. For water takeoffs, this proved problematic and potentially dangerous to crews, as due to excess petrol spurting onto the floats as the NOM engine was primed, this consistently led to fires aboard the aircraft when the power plant was started thus requiring the observer to lie on the lower centre section and extinguish the blaze before scrambling back into his own cockpit to start the second engine, which itself would ignite its own fire and thus require extinguishing again. Once airborne, the main plane deflection was such that the aileron control cables became slack and all lateral control was lost, though this defect was soon put right by the manufacturers, but there remained a disconcerting amount of relative movement between the fuselages caused by flexibility in the wire brace centre section. Furthermore, on only two-thirds of the designed power, performance was mediocre, and to achieve a worthwhile four-hour endurance, the military load had to be limited to 70 pounds of steel darts, while due to the noise caused by the two engines and no internal means of communication, 
The pilot and observer were forced to relay information and orders to each other via hand signal, which proved to be unideal when conducting missions against enemy airships at night. Therefore, the twin Blackburns rapidly fell out of favour with the Admiralty, and despite the fact that the three trial aircraft and four remaining units were dispatched to RNAS Killingholm, they saw seldom use and were subsequently broken up, while the surviving two, 1511 and 1512, were held in storage within the spectacular requisitioned exhibition hall at the RNES Depot Crystal Palace in South London, before being struck off and scrapped in August 1917. In conclusion, the Blackburn twin Blackburn was noted, like the French Spad SR, as one of the most frightening and cumbersome World War I fighters to fly, as thanks to its somewhat rushed design that unhappily married two BE-2C trainer fuselages together in a structurally unsound manner, as well as it being built solely around Smith's unimpressive and unsuccessful 10-cylinder engine, meant what resulted was a complicated, flimsy and dangerous machine doomed to a fleeting career.